。你好，我们是全杰科技，我是高金海，我们现在开始为您做教学展示。Some geometry can be imported into GeoStudio. For example, we can import an AutoCAD DXF file. GeoStudio will create regions from polygons in the DXF file, provided the polygons are completely closed. It is absolutely essential that the polygons in the DXF file that they are completely closed, so that GeoStudio can interpret and use the polygons and create regions. We're going to illustrate here importing a DXF file and we have prepared and provided a file called regions DXF. We're going to import this file and uh, for illustrative purposes here we are going to use a 17 by 11 inch piece of paper and make that our working area. One more thing is that uh, you have to know ahead of time what units were used in creating the DXF file. In this particular case we are going to use uh, metric dimensions so that we know from some other means that the DXF file was created using metric units. Going to GeoStudio then and opening up a blank file. The first thing we need to do is set the page, set page, and we decided to make it 17 inches wide, 11 inches high. Also under set units and scale, we need to make sure that we are selecting metric before we import the DXF file. We'll worry about the scale a little later. Clicking on the Zoom Page button, this is the size of our page when we are at a zoom factor of 68%. So now we can import the DXF file with the File Import Regions command. And in the Resources Files, we have provided for you a file called Import Regions. Clicking on the file name, clicking open, uh, this dialog box appears. We want to import the regions in this file and in this particular case here it is suggesting that it is suggesting that the scale should be 1 to 1000 based on the dimensions in the file. Let us accept the suggested dimension, adjust problem scale, and then if we click on OK, we see that GeoStudio has successfully converted 18 polygons into regions. Now we see that all of the regions that have been imported they do not fall onto our 17 by 11 piece of paper so we will now have to manually go and alter the scale saying set units and scale uh, let's try a scale of a 1 to uh, 1300 same scale in both directions and now we see that all of the regions fit onto the piece of paper. Next, uh, let's shift the regions up and uh, to the right a bit, saying set, units and scale. Let's make the minimum x dimension to be minus 50 and the minimum y 
dimension to be minus 80. Clicking on OK. So now our regions all fit on to the page. Clicking on our grid spacing, and let's look at a grid spacing of say 5 meters by 5 meters. We don't know the exact dimensions of this drawing as yet or these regions, so we can zoom in at this end and we see that we are displaying points and we can in several different ways get the dimensions of those points, say view, object information, clicking on a point, we see that the X dimension is minus 5 meters. At the other end of the problem, using a different command saying draw points, we can click on any existing point and we get the X dimension as 495. So approximately we now know that the dimensions go from 0 to 500. We're going to shift this entire drawing a little bit later, but for the time being, let's just accept the drawing as is. And clicking on the Zoom page icon, we can now sketch an axis to get a better defini definition of the coordinate system. Sketch axis and uh, the distance in the horizontal direction is in meters and the elevation is in meters and we want axis labels on the left and on the bottom. We now get a plus sign so that we can sketch the axis noticing the coordinates in the lower right hand corner of your monitor, let's say that we sketch an axis from uh, a y-coordinate of say minus 10, minus 5, 0, minus 10, 0, minus 10, holding down the right mouse button, we can go all the way to an x-coordinate of 500, and a y-coordinate of, say, 100. We now need to uh, see a larger font on our scale, increasing the axis labels to, so say, an 18-point font so that we can better see the actual axis numbers and labels. Turning off our snap to grid, here we now have imported regions from a DXF file. We can see in this case that it would be convenient to shift all of the regions slightly to the right such that we have more even units on our X dimensions, but we're going to do that in a bit on another topic. For the time being, let's save this drawing as is with the command file save as and let's uh, name this file import dxf. And we will come back to this drawing in a little bit. For the time being, going back to our PowerPoint presentation, there are some difficulties with importing dxf files. And as we have already mentioned, polygons and AutoCAD are not always complete. Then GeoStudio doesn't know what to do. And also, it is possible that the polygons over, like, overlap in AutoCAD. This is acceptable in AutoCAD, but not in GeoStudio. Other uh, considerations is that DXF files have too much unnecessary data sometimes. Uh, unnecessary points cause unnecessary sli slices in slope W, for example. Those of you who will be part of the slope W sessions, we will talk about this in more details as to how slope W discretizes the sliding mass into slices and the number of points comes into play. 
unnecessary points also cause unnecessary and undesirable irregularity in the finite element mesh. So usually, usually, after importing a DXF file, it is necessary to do some editing and modification of the data. In our previous session, I had suggested that when you view your drawing at 100% zoom factor, you should readily be able to see all the objects that have been defined. Going back to GeoStudio and looking at this drawing at 100% zoom factor, we see that there are some areas where there is perhaps too much data and it is difficult to see what is happening at a zoom factor of a hundred percent. I would suggest to you that there is perhaps too much detailed information here. Just to illustrate the point, if we zoom in on this area of the drawing, we have for example a point here and this point is likely unnecessary. We can say modify objects, click on this point, delete this point, and it's likely not required for an analysis at this scale and this size of a problem. Also, if we go back to 100% zoom factor, we see that there is a layer here that is very thin. It's likely unnecessary to have this thin layer here. Same thing here and perhaps here. And so I would encourage you to simplify the drawing and the regions if there is too much information that has come across from a DXF file. Now this is not absolutely mandatory, however it is a, a good recommendation and you should be able to see all the objects, like I've said before, readily and legibly when you are at a zoom factor of a hundred percent. If you can't, then there is maybe too much detail in the definition of the problem. Also, when you now have imported the DXF file and if you are having problems with the polygons not being closed, there is a convenient way to check whether polygons are closed with the key in regions command. If we click on any regions, we can see that the region should be complete and closed and all of the points that fall on the region edges should be highlighted in red. So this is a convenient way of checking up on regions and visually inspecting whether the uh, polygons are closed and the regions are closed. Zooming back then to our zoom objects icon. Once again, we will save this file and we'll come back to it later. Going back to our PowerPoint presentation, here is an example of a file that was imported from a DXF data, DXF file, and it is an illustration of too much and unnecessary data that has been imported. To those of you that are part of the Slope W workshop session, we talk about this in more detail and how by removing a lot of the unnecessary data that we get an answer that is just as realistic and valid as if when all of the detailed uh, data is enclosed. So to repeat, when you import DXF data into GeoStudio or G, uh, import the regions, in almost all cases we would encourage you to inspect the data and to get rid of the unnecessary data for a GeoStudio analysis. This then brings us to the end of our discussion on importing DXF files. 全捷科技, 谢谢您,